something you can't fix. If you can't fix what's broken, you'll, uh, you'll go instead. It's Jay and Adam. It's previewed. It's previewed. Fix it with Adam and Jay. Pages, oh, welcome to Fix It, where friends don't let friends fix pop culture alone. I'm Adam. And I'm Jay. And you're our Vlistener. Well, hey there, Vlisteners. Merry Switchmas. Oh, 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 Switchmas. No gasa, no Chewbacca, Switchmas. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, hop, uh, Jabba the Hutt does not celebrate Life Day. No, they are they they are Switchmas uh, adherents. I mean, they'll still sell you all the all the decorations. Oh, of, of you course, need. Oh, yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, they're bus- they're bu- they're business slugs first and foremost. <laughs> first and foremost, those oh. huts those huts are all about the almighty dollar or the almighty credit. I, I was suppose. about to say gold pr- gold pressed latinum, but that is Star Trek. <laughs> gold pressed latinum mm-hmm. that's what the is that their that's money what, that's Ferengi's money oh, that, that's the, that is the that is the currency of the alpha quadrant but since the federation uh is a so- social society of in utopia that works and doesn't have money because it doesn't need it uh they don't really use Wait, the there's money. no money in the federation nope they it's... can get funds to buy things from people who use but inside the f- uh, federation they're they don't there's no money because why we have everything we need we don't need to pay for anything because we just have replicators to be like people pop up thing they have the ability to transport people through the galaxy and that is the most unbelievable thing about no star currency? trek just no you know maybe capitalism is just too far ingrained in me man maybe i'm too far gone i think you're I too far even... gone ah oh, man what are we... uh, the, uh, there's no place for me in this in the in the federation there was a tng episode about them unfreezing some people that froze themselves in like you know the 90s and one of the guys was like a huge venture capitalist who had a lot of money he's like what do you mean there's no money in the future he's like yeah we don't need it anymore because there's no scarcity we just got we have everything we need so there's no need for currency. And this man does not handle it well. <laughs> he doesn't know what to do. But, of course, like, the Ferengi show up. So, all like, right, he's right. got some information. Like, ah, I know. I'm I'm businessman. All right. This is not a Star Trek podcast. I, it is now, everybody. <laughs> what would it fix it? Where we fix old episodes of TNG. Live like, long and prosper. Like masks. We got to fix that episode. Ooh, boy. Yeah, so many episodes. Mostly the ones where they go on the holodeck the whole time. Get out of there. <laughs> I'm not... Not, Moriarty's I, interesting, I, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, he's in a cube on a, t- on a desk. Neat. Anyways, <laughs> this is our podcast, Fix It. I'm Jay. That's Adam, our resident uh, Ferengi expert. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> if it's your first time uh, listening to the show, uh, you may or may not know Adam and I uh, from, from the pinnacle Ooh. of all content. Wow. The gold standard Mm -hmm. of reaction content on YouTube. You may know us from our reaction channel, uh, Previewed, where we react, review, and riff to all sorts of things on the internet, mostly nerd content. But we're thinking about moving into um, uh, 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 newspaper uh, cartoons. We're like, watch the guys react to this week's family circus. How we laugh and laugh. We We have a good chuckle. We sip our coffee and we talk <laughs> <Yeah>. about. <laughs> Can you believe what's going on? Those damn kids. Kids and, nowadays, and the and youths. I've got to figure out that word jumble. <laughs> well, you may know us from there. This is our show, Fix It, where uh, each week Adam and I uh, we take a piece of pop culture that maybe missed the mark, maybe didn't quite get there, maybe needs just a tad bit of help, and we fix it. Uh, this is actually kind of a, a different format of, for us today. We're kicking off our Switchmas season. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know, we uh, Switchmas is our holiday spectacular uh, season. <laughs> yes. Uh, o- over at Previewed, where uh, it was named after the Christmas Switch. 
and slash you also wanted to switch I also for really Christmas. Wanted to switch for Christmas. Two things merged. We may come up. We came up with Switchmas. Yeah, but I yeah I don't I don't I like to I like to like edit out that part because it just makes me sound like well Jay uh, <laughs> capitalism is a great. Why did so you name deep. this holiday Switchmas? It's like well I as a thirty four year old <laughs> man really wanted the new Nintendo. What's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It just felt really weird. Um, <laughs> but for our Switchmas spectacular, <laughs> we're kicking off the season uh, correctly. Um, we are, we're not necessarily fixing a film. We're per not se. fixing this ep- this, uh, this movie th- because this movie is, I would argue, for its genre, mm-hmm. one of the perfect examples of a perfect movie. Yes, this movie really needs no changing. Uh, we are we are focusing all of our attention on Die Hard, the the classic, the first one, the first one, the OG. The, in my opinion, the best action movie ever made. Well, I think this is one of the main, main reasons we have action movies the way we have them now is because of this movie. Um, now, I wish you like, why Why are you talking about this now? Well, there is a pretty hard debate that's been going on. I, I would say in, it's cul- heated, man. in culture at large mm-hmm. 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 and in our Discord server in particular, that the, the, the age old question is Die Hard. A Christmas movie. Now, uh, for those of you who may know us uh, in our opinions and have heard our opinions in the past, we are very staunchly on two sides of the coin. There are only two uh, sides. There are only two sides. And I am on one of them. And I am on the other. Mm-hmm. And so uh, today for our fix, we are going to be turning Die Hard to what we think it should, to what to the extent to which we should think it be. To make it actually a Christmas movie. Yes, we're going to adjust a couple things in the movie so the debate is over that Die Hard is now a Christmas movie. Undebatable, it's a Christmas movie. A couple of details. I, I'm on team. It's already a Christmas movie. You don't have to touch it. Jay, clearly on the it's not. Here's the thing. I am on. I am staunchly. It is not a Christmas movie, and I am staunchly in the opinion of it doesn't need to be a Christmas movie to be a good movie. It does not need to be a Christmas movie, at, at all. But, but our fixes are going to be. Okay, but we needed an episode this week. Gonna, darn it! We're just going to adjust a couple of the little things here and there, so the debate is over. Make it for for everyone can agree upon. Ironclad. This is now a Christmas movie. Before we dive into. Before we dive into this, because this is gonna, I have a feeling this is gonna get heated and get a little nuts. It Adam, might. how are you doing? I am doing, I'm doing all right. Actually, I'm doing okay. So it was interesting. Okay. So we just got through the first of the two holiday seasons that are pretty much back to back. Yeah. With Thanksgiving, and Andor ended, and we did the Guardians uh, holiday special. Both of those episodes were fantastic. Those were really good. Andor is an amazing show. And then we just like, okay, well, what's next? Well, okay, Willow's coming out. And that's going to be, well, okay, two episodes on the first day. Oh. Um, but, no, you know, uh, an episode a day for the next couple weeks. Okay, cool. But, like, boy, December's kind of empty. Huh. And then, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, unbeknownst to us, Brazil's Comic-Con happened. <laughs> and uh, Avatar The Way of Water comes out. The Way out. of Water. The Way of Water. The Way of Water. 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 Comes out in a couple weeks, and everyone's like, hey, there's probably going to be a whole bunch of trailers for all the stuff that's coming out next year, because it's going to be a lot, and now's the per- time to get these trailers out, because they're banking on everyone going to see Avatar, The Way of Water, in a couple weeks, and they want to get those trailers out ahead of that movie. Yeah. We're like, oh, okay, cool. Well, I was in a kind of a weird, boy, what are we, we're just going to be working a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff this month, because... Last year, like at this time, we were really busy and like yeah. doing stuff. Like I think it was like Witcher was coming out and like uh-huh. Cobra Kai was in a couple weeks. Like, oh man, this thing Christmas like oh, 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 oh. and now it's just like, oh, it's just it's got the one show and like nothing else really going on. Yeah, weird. We got the one, we got Willow and no one's watching Willow. The, nobody watched. Hey guys, watch the. Are you watching? Watch Willow. It's, the first episode was great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No oh my one, god. I don't think anyone really likes that or is really caring about Willow. Um. But there was this general sense of like, oh, okay, well, I guess we'll just, you know, get ready for next year. And we got stuff, we got stuff to talk about and figure out and all sorts of things. Absolutely. But then as we were, what were we doing yesterday? <laughs> so much happened yesterday. Oh, we did the Palooza. Yeah. We taped a Palooza in the morning. I was like, great. 
fantastic. Jay went home. He was going about to go stream in a couple hours. I needed to edit do the Palooza because I was going to get it out that afternoon. And then all of a sudden, God, oh my God, Transformers <laughs> dropped the trailer. It's like, I forgot, didn't even realize there was a Transformers movie I didn't know made. either. Hey, Jay, come back over. It's 3 o'clock. Okay, great. Come back over. Boop. Great. Nailed it. Okay, Jay's going to... Right, I'm going to go stream. Great. I'll knock this thing up. Boop, boop, boop. I'll, I'll the Indiana Jones trail. And it was just a, a three-pronged of, okay, we're done. Oh, we're not? Okay. And just like, oh. Yeah, last night after we got done with everything and everything was out and you were streaming, and I was like, yeah, all the, you know, people were watching. Everyone was having a good time watching the stuff. It's like, yeah. here, we haven't had this in a, in a little bit, about a minute of, like, excitement. Yes. Of a, everyone like, this. We. Yes. Yeah. Because, like, Andor... Is was probably one of the best shows of the year, if 100%. not the best. Was it good reaction content? Totally, and not exactly. Not exactly. We, which is fine. Which is nothing. That's not what the show was supposed to be. No, and that's fine because it was still great. But like, we haven't really had. I guess I really haven't felt a communal. Hey, a thing. Everyone's excited. Since, yeah, the like, Discord was was hopping. Yeah, like, like a lot of people was showed hopping. up to stream. Yes, like everyone was excited to like be around and talk about stuff. And it was yeah, there are certain days where it just like it feels like a preview day. Mm -hmm. Whereas other days it's like ah, oh, we put out an episode. Hope you liked it. Yeah, like oh, we'll we, see you oh we thought this was great. We did a lot of good bits in this one. This is like, yeah, how's the how, how's the dragon? Like oh, this is great. And that's one thing I think we are, are really fun. good at as content creators is that I feel like we let folks in on our process enough that they feel like they're part of our day in a way. Well, that was one of the fun things that I enjoyed when people were just like, I love the story arc of the beginning <laughs> of Indy yes. to the end of when Guardians came out. You can you can just see <laughs> how much Adam's like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> are, we, are we done yet? Because like, we yeah. got, I got the plues out today, and it, well, some someone worked today, like, and it was like, oh, uh, this video came out four thousand nine hundred and twenty-two hours after Adam <laughs> thought it was gonna be out. <laughs> I was like, that's right, I thought it was gonna be out yesterday. <laughs> nope. But like, we haven't really had a in like pop culture, I guess, and, like, or just you know, nerd culture of like a hey yeah. since like honestly, maybe the end of Obi Wan. Yeah, that it's was the last time where it felt like... Where everyone was on the same page enjoying a thing. Yeah. Because after that was like Miss Marvel and She-Hulk and House of the Dragon and like good it stuff. It hasn't felt like that since the Obi-Wan trailer dropped out of nowhere. Yeah. Like that. But people were opinionated about all those other shows. Yeah. And not it wasn't... Every, everyone was like, well, I didn't really like it. Well, this is fun. But like, everyone was like a little bickering. Like, oh, this is rough to watch. Like, yeah, it is. But like, we got some good bits. But like... Man, no, yesterday, no, no, none of that. It's just, ah! <laughs> yeah. Ah, Maximals! Yeah. Ah! It was one of those, <laughs> yeah, like, I even streamed for way longer than I normally do, because we were just having fun. Like, it's the kind of, it's, those are the days that it's crazy easy to, to just, like, do and, and make a bunch of stuff, because it's, like, everyone's... Well, you're feeding off the energy of the crowd. 100%. And like we, we were able to do that on stage when we we're doing comedy and stuff like that, but yeah. like we can still we can do that when you're streaming because you can just kind of like you can feel the buzz. Yeah, in the you chat. can just like feel it. Yeah, yeah. And we just haven't had one of those days in in a really long time. Yeah. So it felt good to be like I was exhausted by the time <laughs> Guardians came out, dude. But like <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, man, views and this is everyone's having fun. Look at all this stuff. Ah, it feels good. I'm exhausted, but yeah. I feel good. I got ten straight. Come here's like, how long have you been online? I'm like. A long time. <laughs> She's like, "Are you, are you done?" And I was like, y "Yes." <laughs> She's like, "Okay, it's time <laughs> for you to be done." <laughs> like, it, which is very rare. Where she comes and she goes, "Hey, <laughs> hey." Were, were you? And you were you done streaming at that point? Or? Oh, it was the perfect. We found like the perfect, uh, perfect like log off moment. But it was just like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we need we need. We need these wonderful women in our lives sometimes to be like, hey, hey, hey how you doing? Maybe, maybe, maybe no more. Maybe, maybe be done now. All right. So I'm good. Yeah. You're good. I'm great, baby. Awesome. I'm great. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm struggle busting here and there, but like nothing that, you know, nothing that's going to kill me. Uh, okay. You know, no, good. that's good. Nothing lethal. <laughs> you know? Oh, no. Look at me. Ah! Look at me. <laughs> Um. Uh, all right. I think it's time. You want to get into it? I really do. Okay. I really do. Because <laughs> I'm like really because you just seem so like calm and collected about everything. Yeah. Um. 
But I think, honestly, before I think we launch into it, I think sure. this is the perfect opportunity. Maybe Brian can hit us with a little of that beautiful... Oh, that'd be great. A little of that beautiful bean fun fact diehard footage. Hans Booby. Today, we are trying to infuse a little bit more Christmas spirit into 1988's Die Hard, directed by John McTiernan and written by Jeb Stewart and Stephen E. D'Souza. This movie stars Bruce Willis, Alan Rickman, Bonnie Bedelia, and Reginald Vell Johnson. I love you, Carl Winslow. Die Hard is based on the book Nothing Lasts Forever by Roderick Thorpe, and the movie cost around $25 to $35 million, but made $140 million. In total, there are five Die Hard movies. Die Hard, Die Hard 2, Die Hard with a Vengeance, Live Free or Die Hard, A Good Day to Die Hard. And most of those probably would actually need to be on Fix It. But today, we're just adding some Christmas spirit to the original Die Hard. For more fun facts about Die Hard, check out the audio version of this podcast. But for now, back to you, gentlemen. Thanks, Brian. Wow, Brian. Oh, man. Way to check out that Wayback Machine and find out all that info. Oh, my gosh. And the puppets you involved? That was insane. That was so creative. All the different voices you came up with. Oh, them? my goodness. Wow. And it was all, and it all rhymed. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and I am big pentameter. <laughs> Ah, taking it to another level. Regular old Shakespeare over here. You know? Now, I guess maybe we should also ask Brian what side of the coin he's on. Oh, yeah. Because there's three of us here. Hey, Brian, what side of the debate are you on? Thanks, Adam. I tend to fall on the side of the coin that Die Hard is a Christmas movie, but just barely. I think it has the themes there. I do think John McClane learns a lesson. I don't think this movie is as powerful if he doesn't go to find his wife any other holiday. This just doesn't jive if it's like Easter or Arbor Day. And um, I relate it to kind of like celebrating Christmas in Hawaii. You know, it's beautiful out. There isn't snow. It's not like over the top Christmas like an East Coast Christmas, but the holiday spirit is absolutely still there. Anyway, back to you, gentlemen. Good. I told you he's on my side. Good. I told you. That's right. I knew it. He's on my team. I, 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 I felt I, it in my bones. In my bones. <laughs> well, I felt it in my beans, oh, Jay. I felt it in my beans. <laughs> oh, yes. The harvest of beans is coming, and I feel it inside. All right. Now, do, do mm. you want me to try to defend my position first, or do you want to go it's first? It's just not a Christmas movie, dude. You need. Okay, it's just not for, a okay, Christmas movie. So, first off, then, you need to describe what parameters need to be met for it to be a Christmas movie. For a, for a movie to be a Christmas movie. According to Jay Schmidt. Someone has to learn a lesson that is influenced by either A, Christmas magic, or B, the Christmas or like the, the, the Christmas spirit. Okay. Someone has to learn kindness. Someone has to learn the importance of family. Someone has to learn the, the importance of like give of giving freely. That's what makes you know a Christmas carol actually like a Christmas thing. It's that like Ebenezer Scrooge learns right. To, and now that I'm, I'm talking about Scrooge, all I can think about is our conversation last week where you were just like, I was like, I feel like you're the type of person that like three ghosts would visit and you'd just be like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> nah, no thanks. <laughs> I'm perfectly fine, thank you. But I'm the ghost of Christmas. Yeah, whatever. I'm happy. Yeah, I'm good. Deuces. <laughs> I mean, you can hang out if you want. Cool. That'd be sure, yeah. Um, you have to be influenced by, by Christmas has to like teach you a lesson in some way or another okay like and in die hard there's no there's it happens to take place during christmas okay that's it it's mm. at a christmas party it could be any kind of party it could be any kind of party in in the argument that i'm using here you could make die hard take place during St. Patrick's Day. Sure. It could be a St. Patrick's Day party. All of his little quips could be like, top of the morning to you. It, it could be. Oh, you're right. You know what it I'm saying? Be. Like, It could be, but it's not. So using that logic, it's just it's just not by use. Okay, using the, the Die Hard logic, Mall Rats is an Easter movie. Okay. But by using that logic... By using Are that you just logic, get movies that take place during holidays. Yes. Okay. Yes, that don't make any sense. Using that logic, The Fugitive 
is a St. Patrick's Day movie. Oh. Because of the St. Patrick's Day parade that they run through. Oh, I didn't know that. I'm looking for more examples sure. right now. All right. Right now. Mm-hmm. Using that logic... Using that logic. Uh, <laughs> using that logic. This is the worst example. Oh, <laughs> should I look at it first before you say it? Uh, using that logic, the 1967 film The St. Valentine's Day Massacre <laughs> is a Valentine's Day movie. And I think I just proved my point. That's horrible. It takes place during Valentine's Day. I, I, oh, I, oh my you God. Take, your, take your favorite gal down to the, you know, have mm-hmm. a romantic dinner and then go see the Valentine's Day, you know? Mm-hmm. It doesn't, it's not, this, it doesn't. Well, earlier you just said you have to learn the, the value of family. For, in a Christmas, Christmas capacity. Yes. Yeah. And that's what exactly what this movie is all about. Okay. John is traveling to LA. Sure. For the express reason of saving his marriage. Yeah. And spending the holiday with his estranged wife and kids. Yes. He's going there to spend the holiday season and try to make it work with his wife. Okay. Sure. The party is also ta- there's a reason why the bad guys are attacking on Christmas Eve. Cuz there's a party. Because the boss will be there and there aren't anybody else in the building. Yeah. It could be any other party. It could be New Year's. But it helps that it is Christmas specifically. But the main reason Wh- why like, elaborate on that. Well, if it's any other party, there's more people involved. No one uh, during New Year's, there could be more people there, or maybe less. We don't know. But you're saying the boss wouldn't be there. No, probably not. You could just also just write that the boss is there. You could. Maybe the boss likes the party. You don't know. But the boss is definitely (laughs) going to be there. Takagi loves Jaeger. (laughs) (laughs) Loves to party. But he's definitely going to be there for the Christmas party. (laughs) Fair enough. Okay. All right. But the main reason, the main reason I'm going to lean on here is because John is traveling there to try to make amends with his wife and make his marriage work because it is Christmas. And they are fighting in the beginning because remember they have that little talk and it kind of goes off the rails before Holly goes off to have her speech. Yeah. And John's like, come on, God, man. Oh, John. And then the bad guys show up and then he runs out. But by the end of the movie, granted, could there be more? Sure. But by the end of the movie, after... Doing all of the things to save his wife, they both maybe realize, maybe without talking about it too much, because it's more of an action film, of like, family's really the most important thing, we both care about each other, and we have kids, it's Christmas, we can make this work. They kiss and they go home to have Christmas with their family. Yeah, but no one actually says that. Mm. No one says, uh, honestly, there's one line in it that could change it for everything. If she looked at him and said, Merry Christmas... Or like, would you want to come home? You want to come home for Christmas? No one says that. She does say it at nah. the beginning. In the in the beginning. No, no, no. I'm saying at the end. I'm saying at the end. Because he said that he had he found up he could stay with a friend of his, who you know, somebody a cousin, from, you know, somebody who from the force, who uh, who retired out here. And she's like, no, no, we have a guest room. You, you can stay with us. And he's like, you sure? And he's like, yes, John. You need to be with your family. Like, they are trying to make it work. Sure. I'm not saying this is the most Christmas of movies. I'm saying this slides in just. I'm say, but I'm, you but know, here's Indy the thing. grabbing his this hat is before. A, the, this is a before the, 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 thing, the, the door concept falls. of learning a family, like learning that family is important, is not just a Christmas movie thing. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it has to be influenced by the concept of Christmas. Like I would argue that like. Like we were talking about Hawkeye earlier, that mm. show has a more of a claim to being Christmas show because, because the concept is like I need to get home in time for Christmas. Like that is a Christmas trope. What's John doing? He's trying to get home. He's trying to save for the, Christmas. He, no, he's just trying to stop the terrorists. He's only there to get home for Christmas. The only thing stopping it's him never from going home said. with Holly. It's never implicitly said. To see his kids. It's not overt. Is it's, Hans and I'm the just bad saying, guys. You got to do a lot of you got to do a lot of leaning and a lot of and a lot of reaching in order to get not there. Not too much. It's, it could be it's, it's it within arm's reach. In a reach, Christmas movie it's it is arms. overt. There is like a there's like a snowflake landing on your nose and you go, "What? Oh, like an angel gets its wings." Like we have paper falling from the sky 
why it is basically snowing in LA at the end because there's paper falling all over the place. Mm-mm. It is a type of snow, Jay. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not hearing it. It's. But here's you, the thing: you re, you refuse to change your mind. The- <laughs> you do. I, I'm presenting a very good argument that I'm getting. I am getting across the. And I say nay. The edge, of, Jay. The edge of the football is over the line. That's a touchdown. I, I the ball's know. not fully in, but no. the nose of the ball has crossed the threshold, and that's a touchdown. No, but I think, but I, but I would say that the receiver's foot is out of bounds when he catches it in the end zone. So, I, I'm. This is a running play, Jay. No, <laughs> Run, look, <laughs> just, no one wants right to watch. up the middle. No one wants to watch a running plays. You grind it throw, out, baby. You throw that ball, baby. No. Come on, Flutie. You. <laughs> 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 Uh, <laughs> you know, no one, no one likes a running game. All right, we want to just running games win championships. Man. I know they do, and it's just, it's just better. Like that's what my my frustrating thing about football is that like if you pl- actually like pl- if you play to your strengths and when you have a good defense, it's the worst sport to watch. That's boring. It's so boring. Yeah. There's such there's such amazing sportsmanship happening on the field, but it just it sucks. I mean, it's fun when like a quarterback gets tackled. Oh sure, you get hit in the back. But you also, but I. You, do you feel this way too? Anytime like the quarterback gets tackled, it doesn't matter what team you're rooting for. You, you're kind of like, oh, you know, if he was just trying to throw it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, don't be mean. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I don't know why. It just feels like it shouldn't be allowed. <laughs> oh. Well, it depends on the quarterback. Sometimes I can't break his leg. But like, yeah. Oh, but yeah. I mean, the quarterback oh, is so skinny. As Trent com- Green. Com- com- compared <laughs> to... Those broke linebackers. His femur. <laughs> he was supposed to be the saving grace for Kansas City that year, and it was, that's why that's why preseason ball is is ridiculous. That's not what we're here to talk about. We're talking about Die Hard, darn it. I know this doesn't matter, but Trent Green, while he did play for the Kansas City Chiefs, hurt his knee in a preseason game when he was playing for the St. Louis Rams. And I know it doesn't matter, but I just wanted to share that. Uh, back to movie talk, gentlemen. <sighs> the bad guys are humming Christmas carols throughout. There's Christmas puns throughout. I'm not saying th- this just this is spicing. This is spice on top of uh, on top of the uh, the Christmas cake here. I w- okay. Here's what I will admit to. There's carols going on. I feel like they're using Christmas music. No, that is no that is Ode, Ode to, to Joy. Jo- Ode is, to Joy is, is not- a Christmas. Mm. It is. I suppose maybe it is a little bit, but not really. Uh, but they play it as a celebratory noise for music as when the, the bad guys are achieving their goals. That is a really good sequence. Man, when we watch this movie with... And he says Merry Christmas when they go crack open the safe. Yeah, that's true. But, man, I watched this movie with Discord a couple days ago. You did? <laughs> and even, like, I was just watching at my desk and taking notes and uh, other stuff. And uh, Kimberly came in and she was like... Uh, Cause I was just like laughing and like having a good time. Yeah. And she came in. She's like having fun. I was like, God, this movie rules. <laughs> I was like, this. Movie, I was like, this, I was like it's very just, good. I just had a smile from ear to ear. Yes. I was just like, this movie. This movie is. This movie is perfect. Like note for note, beat for beat. This movie is exactly what an action movie should be. Mm-hmm. It is so perfect. So like, why not? Like, I'm ragging on it, but like, it's I'm ragging on it something completely unrelated to the fact that this movie. It's just... <laughs> this movie will stand the test of time. <laughs> I forgot. I like, And every time I watch it, I feel like I walk away with a new favorite part. <laughs> John, when John tells the chief of police that they just got butt fucked on national television, I was like... <laughs> That is so good. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get butt fucked on television. I was like, get him, John. Roast him. Roast him. Men are dead. But roast him. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I shot a kid. <laughs> it's just that line delivery is the only part of the movie that I would change. Because there's a because the thing is, is like the rest of that like whole line is like really good and like you re- like he's really acting, but like he just takes too long between the I shot a kid <laughs> into the rest of it that it's just like ah uh, you just you memed yourself. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> you gave well, yourself too we didn't much. Know, they didn't know what memes were back in the day. <laughs> they so. sure did not. They really mm-hmm. didn't. Shot a kid. <laughs> 
Oh man, it's man. a great movie. God, there's man. enough bad guys between John and the goal. There's enough of them getting you know trounced you know in order. Well, and also this was the first. I mean, granted, we didn't see this like when it came out in theaters. No, because uh, we were too wow. young. I was too young too. Um, but this is like one of those. The fact that like he is John McClane gets the absolute crap kicked out of him in this movie when he shows up at the end of the face off with hans he looks like a gremlin well, like he looks like a hell spawn his tank started white and it ends black yeah oh someone on discord is saying like whoever did like the the continuity of that of of, of that tank top like should should have gotten an honorary oscar because that's <laughs> just too much yeah and it's like we we see some he, like a, a very like mortal person yes doing insane things mm-hmm. and like the fact that like he gets taken out by like glass on the floor mm-hmm. is like a very human thing whereas like during this time frame like action movies were like arnold schwarzenegger being a superhero for an hour and a half yep whereas this is just like i am barely barely making it i should have died at least nine times like when he in the elevator sequence when he jumps and like lights on the thing i was just like that's he, there's no, no he, he should have fallen down that shaft yeah it's just like iconic moment after iconic moment <laughs> well there's a reason why people have like the that ornament now of just john with the lighter being like yeah come to the coast have a good time yeah. <laughs> it's like yes <laughs> Yeah. You know why? You know why they hang it on the Christmas tree? Because they Die Hard's a Christmas movie. No, 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 no. no. Sorry. Again, again. B- the ball, is, the nose is, of the ball is, is over people, the line. That Jay. is people cashing in on the fact that people just like being like, huh? Uh? <laughs> Anyways, I, I, okay. I don't mean to be like. I'm, I'm, I'm saying touchdown. I, I think you, check, pre- you check presented a legitimate. It's over the line. You, you presented by a legitimate. That argument. much. Missed it by that much. No, no it's over the line by that much. Just barely. It just barely scored. But it's a score nonetheless. You could just set this movie during any holiday and it would be the same movie. But it is more fun since it's Christmas because he tapes the thing. I think it'd be pretty uh, fun with St. Patty's Day. He tapes, tapes the gun to the back of his neck with wrapping paper tape. Yeah. With holiday tape. Christmas tape. Yeah. And come on. You, you, can't, you couldn't do the I have a machine gun now and ho, ho, ho at any other time. Him taunting them. It was a Halloween party. I have a machine gun. Happy Halloween! <laughs> <laughs> or no, trick or treat! Trick Come or treat. on, man! Oh, you can do trick that. or treat! I got a machine gun now, baby! I mean, he's got a pumpkin on his head, and they take it off, and the absolutely, guy's like, um, yeah, uh huh, okay, yeah, Easter. But there wouldn't be really a Halloween party yeah, going man. on that the boss would definitely be at. Easter the boss is time. definitely at a Christmas party. You don't know. You don't know what this boss is up to. I you're right. I don't. You don't know. I Mr. do not is a freak, baby. He he could be. He, maybe he loves Halloween. Mr. Takagi. Hans Gruber is one of the best bad guys of all time. A thousand percent. A thousand. Because he's so cool. Percent. He's charming. Yes. He is. The the descent into. It's one of my favorite things about this movie. Having just recently rewatched it. You really get the feeling at the top of this movie that these guys know a thousand percent what they're doing. They, when Hans Gruber walks in and says, "Like, make no mistake, like we are in control," you're like, "Oh, they, they absolutely are. They absolutely are." Oh no! And it, how it slowly turns, like how they slowly disintegrate, is really, really interesting to watch. Well, they don't even really disintegrate until. 15 minutes before the movie ends. But it's a slow burn. Like, things... Like he's and, and They're all like, keep it together. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. It's just like people like in a wobbly canoe, like, ah, uh, you mean, got it? Even after the, the roof explodes, they're still in control. Yeah. Like, yeah, they lost a bunch of guys at this point, but, like, they could have still made it out. Probably. Granted, at that point, Argyle, Argyle had crashed into the ambulance. But, like... They still pro- probably could have commandeered something or gotten out. Yeah. Like, I still believe that if the, any of them were still alive, especially if Hans were still alive by the end of the movie, he would have gotten out. Yeah. And the only reason why the big guy died is because he went to, uh, you know, shoot uh, Bruce Willis. If he didn't go shoot Bruce Willis, he would have been fine. He was Bruce Willis the whole time. He was Bruce Willis the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Oh, man. Um, sh- Shall we... Shall we turn this into a Christmas movie? Let's make this a Christmas movie. <clears throat> okay. 
Do you want me to go first? I do. Okay. I do because, because I, I mean, presented such a good mm, case for that already. Yeah, is. I'm actually like I'm I'm ready for story time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, this is going to be a little bit different because uh, there's no again like we said we don't there's no fixing this movie. We're just going to take a couple things out real quick and add in a couple twists of just what's already happened. We're we're basically just going to be like running through the the events of the same the same events of the movie, but just like hey, just change this to this and oh, this person's over here now and this this and this happens. So. This isn't going to be too yeah. drastically different from what the actual movie is. But here we go. Die Hard. Yeah. The Christmas movie. Same same basic starting plate. We're on a plane. John's there. He's talking to the guy. He's like, hey, you know, if you got a thing, you take, your, take your shoes off. You need to scrunch your feet or whatever. He's like, oh, okay, sure, this fucking guy. Yeah, whatever. That, what an insane buck wild thing to say to someone, another stranger on a, on sure. a plane. Sure. I guess it was the 80s. So, like... <laughs> People talked about that. You know, people yeah. smoked. They carried guns on planes. Yeah, they were all just they, doing coke in the bathrooms. Just <laughs> <laughs> woo! Oh man, popples. Have you seen those? They're weird. They're like that's what people. That's what kid wants for Christmas this year. All right, whatever, baby. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Scooting and looting. <laughs> Cocaine bear. <laughs> but here's the first big difference of this movie. After John gets the, you know, it's like, oh yeah, you know, take your feet and make fists with your feet. He hears a couple kids sitting in the row behind him, and he goes, Hey, Jack, Lucy, shut up. We're almost there. Because his kids are on the plane. Oh. And Jack and Lucy are not a toddler and a five-year-old. They're like 10 and 12. Okay. Lucy, they, they've aged. And remember, Jack's in Die Hard 4? His son's in the fourth movie. Oh, yeah. Right? Maybe. Or the fifth? Was there a fifth? I think there Brian, was. Brian, help! Brian! I know he was in one. Yeah, I think there he was a fifth one. Brian should know. Okay, so his son Jack was played by Jay Courtney in 2013's A Good Day to Die Hard. In 2007's Live Free or Die Hard, his daughter Lucy was in it and played by Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Back to you, gentlemen. Good job, Brian. Thanks for that. Thanks, buddy. So, Jack is, and Jack is older. He's the older brother, because okay. Lucy was the one who answered the phone in the movie. Sure. And I was like, hi, mommy. Oh, I, yeah. I, 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 I. Yeah. What would you say to your kids? Mommy, I want you to come home. Man, no. is there anything more satisfying when he punches that reporter in the face? That's real good. Mm-hmm. Like, screw you, Stupid dude. Peck. Get out of here, Peck. Anyways, so the kids are on the plane because they the kids stayed with John in this version in New okay. York because they are older. And they didn't want to leave the city and their support system because they're in school. Yeah. They had people in the city that was helping them. Yes. Holly had a, got an opportunity at the, the whatever the company's Takagi. called. Takagi. Well, no. That, was that the name? The, the Nakatomi building. Well, the Nakato- it's the Nakatomi building, but is it the Nakatomi company? Yes, I or- believe so. Okay. But they got the boss's name is Takagi. I see. But I the real bosses the are over in Japan. Company. I always thought the Nakatomi was just the name of the building. I think, well, they were building it. I see. I see. Yeah. So anyways, so John, so in this version, John and Holly, you know, the same situation, but the kids stayed with John in New okay. York. And now John brought the kids out to LA to be with Holly for Christmas because we're still trying to make this marriage work and yes. I'm bringing the family and we're trying to spend Christmas together. So that's the, so that's basically the situation. So everything happens on the, 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 the plane normally, but now we see the kids and now they get picked up by Argyle. John's in the front seat with our guy while the kids are in the back kind of horsing around a little bit. John's like, guys, no, don't, that's, don't drink that. That's alcohol. That's not for you. <laughs> Is that just some coke in there, blah, blah, blah. But the same, like, uh, d- uh, backstory, all the stuff that John tells our guy and our guy's like, you know, I kind of, you know, I'm a bartender where I'm a taxi driver. Like, you know, he kind of gets the same yeah. information on John. We get the same information, but we got the kids, you know, messing around in the back. So there's a little bit more, a little bit more family information that comes sure. out. Um, they pull up to the building and, you know, our guy says, you know what, if, I, you know, I'm gonna stay in the parking lot. I'm gonna stay in the parking garage if this doesn't work out. And for whatever reason, you wanna, I don't send the kids down or whatever. I'll, I can watch them if you want. I know you guys might need the time, but I'm gonna charge you extra for babysitting. But just know I have a bunch of nieces and nephews, so I'm great with kids. John's like, okay, you're awfully nice, but okay. So he gets the card or whatever. Again, and then they go into the building. Yeah. Go. They meet the front desk guy, and he tries to, and then John tries to find Holly's name under McLean, not there. So he looks up her maiden name. They do such a nice job in the movie of just like subtly telling you things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really. Mm. And so when John finds the ma- under her Holly under the maiden name, Lucy's like, "Wait, who's Holly Gennaro? I don't. 
and she's like, and John's like, well, that was your mo- as your mom's maiden name before we got married. So, oh, does that mean that she's not my mommy anymore? Oh no, Lashy. And so I then take the express elevator up. John and the kids had this moment of, no, Lucy, Jack, listen, you, we will always be your parents, and we love you very much. I know your mom and I are having. We're trying to figure this whole thing out, but no matter what happens, you need to know that we are your parents and we will love you. Yeah. So it's a nice little family moment. And it's the season. That's We're going to spend nice. Christmas together. And now let's all take off our shoes. Let's take off our shoes <laughs> and make little fists with our feet. <laughs> okay, so uh, John and the kids come up, show up to the party. Uh, they, they're looking for Holly, but she's off doing a thing. I just had the thought. Yes. Like, I, I imagine someone's reading like the end of the script and being like, well, why wouldn't he have his shoes on? All this glass. And so, like, the screenwriter was like, why wouldn't he have his shoes on? I'll give you a reason. Like, some guy on the plane is just like, take your shoes off and scrunch your toes up, butthole. <laughs> there you go. There's your justification. <laughs> yeah. oh, tell me I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's tension. Check out the stakes. <laughs> What's this character's name? Does, doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> He's plain guy. Shut up. <laughs> so... They try to find Holly. Uh, she's not in her office because she's off doing a thing. And they meet Alex in <laughs> Holly's office. And Alex is actively doing coke. <laughs> oh. Because remember, like, we, they walk in and he's just like, he's just... He's coming. doing the like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, no. He We catch him a little bit further. He has... Not, he's, he's just like... S- oh! <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, hey. And yeah, John, he, so yeah. John's he's like... He's still riding the chairlift up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and so John's like what, trying to hide, you know, trying to hide the kids or whatever. And Alex, is, of course, is an ass to, to John and the kids uh, and it's like oh Holly's off someone new blah 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 and then Jack notices that Alex still has coke in his mustache and calls him out for it and Alex it does not appreciate Jack's frankness and says something like a little terse little like you know like kind of like a because he's like a really nice and good business guy or whatever but he, so it has like an underhead comment that Jack does not pick up on but John yeah. sure does uh-huh. and so there's definitely like oh I'm about to punch this guy for stepping up to my kid but that's when Holly comes in, diffuses the situation, and says hi to the kids. And it is awkward. Everything's really, because they haven't been seeing each other like six months. And things are strained. And the kids are picking up on it. And it's like, hey, no, blah, blah. Meanwhile, like, we see the bad guys starting to come on into the building. Yeah, man. You know, they're, 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 they're driving in. Yeah. Back upstairs. Uh, John and Holly have that conversation again of John in the bathroom. You know, he's got his shirt off. His, his shoes are off now. The kids might be playing somewhere in the back. With their shoes off, too. Just, you're making little fists with their feet. Um, and they have that, you know, John, they're trying to figure it out, but of course they get fall right back into the old patterns and they start arguing a little bit. And then they say, Hey, hi, Holly. Um, it's time for you, for you to give the speech. Oh yeah. Holly goes out for the speech, leaving John and the kids in the office. We go back downstairs. The bad guys roll in same stuff here. All the, the bad guys breaking in is all the same here. Yeah. Um, yeah, because there's no. It's the, perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. It's yeah. like the guys is diehard. The guy, yeah. Holly, uh, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, Huey Lewis takes over. Like all, all of it's the same. They come up to the building, but this time we see Holly giving her speech, and the bad guys roll in as she's talking. Oh yeah, because it's like a good speech. Yeah, because they, they, they didn't show that all in the movie, but yeah. this time we're gonna see a little bit of it, and then the bad guys roll in, and they take everybody hostage, and then John of course goes grabs his gun and is about to go see what happens, but he's like, oh, my kids are right here. And they go, okay, Jack, we talked about this. If wherever, whatever happens, you know, so like you need, you and you and your sister need to go hide. Yeah. And I'm going to go save mommy. And so, uh, and then she looks outside and sees all the bad guys kind of coming in. And he's like looking around and like, okay, wait, I, you know, assessing the situation before he's like, he turns back to Jack. And he's like, what do you need? Wait five minutes, hide, wait five minutes. And if you see an opening, Make your way down to the parking garage with Argyle. Oh, yeah. And then John runs out. And now, basically, the rest of the stuff, basically, the next situation basically all happens the same. The bad guys show up. They take everybody hostage. Uh, Jack and Lucy are hiding. John goes upstairs. He you know, and confronts the guy, you know, up on that upper level, kills the first guy. They fall down the stairs. He breaks his neck. Who does that weird little trot with the gun? Yes. <laughs> when he's, like, running through, he's like... I, I, it's like one of those things he does it so confidently you're like is that like the tactical jog is that what you're supposed to do a tactical jog a t- <laughs> <laughs> um so when hans takes over or takes everyone hostage mm-hmm. he his he we actually like see a more of a full speech from him this time because we saw a little bit of it but like i wanted to talk a little bit more 
And this time it's laced with a lot more Christmas stuff. Not in a ham handed way. Ha- oh, are you saying Hans or sorry? Hans. Um, when Hans is when he's talking to all the when, hostages. To all the hostages. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. When John's gotcha, talking gotcha. about all, ta- all the hostages, his what he's talking about now is a little bit more Christmas themed, but a little bit more like someone has been a Grinch, and I'm going to show you what true holiday spirit is. It's not ham handed. He's not trying to make jokes, but he's like, no, there is a reason I'm here on Christmas. Yes. Now he doesn't divulge what it is, but you can sense that there is a Christmas reason. Why he and his crew are here. Oh. All right. Okay. John takes out the first guy upstairs. Meanwhile, they take Takagi off to the the conference room to get him. He's like, yeah, we need you to give the uh, the code word to do the thing. And, of course, he does. not he's like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you don't understand what you've done. I used to work for this company. I, my brother and I were in the security department in, like, Germany's branch of this building. Okay. But we discovered that you guys stopped giving us our Christmas bonuses five, six years back. You kept promising us that we would get, you know, the company's been doing very well. We're all aware, aware of that. But you just stopped giving us money at the end of the year. Money that we needed to survive. Yeah. Money, especially that, you know, especially like, you know, West Germany. Like, we needed we needed those funds. This is the um, this is the Christmas vacation plan. Oh. <laughs> You just kept giving us jellies. And yeah. we didn't want, you promised us, we wanted pools. <laughs> but like my brother and I, we have families. And you didn't support us. Yeah. And especially when he's like walking through the room, you see all those models of all the, like the things that. Like we, the, like we see the company doing well. And you guys mm-hmm. keep crying poverty that you can't do bonuses. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, it's nice to see all these models of all the, uh, the projects you guys are dumping money in that, uh, you know, it's nice that you guys were, uh, Pouring money back into the company to build these projects. So it's kind of the same vibe, but with a Christmas slant. It would have been nice if you actually, you know, invest instead of investing back into the business, you invested in your people. Yeah. But, you know, you decided to, you you and the board or whatever decided to, you know, be a Grinch and like take, you know, take the money for yourselves. Gotcha. That's that's not going to happen anymore. Our families need, you know, need this money. And that's exactly what we're here to do. We're taking back what's rightfully ours. Yeah. With interest. Give us the give us the code. I don't know the code. Oh, okay. Well, well, there's another way we can do this. Bam! Shoots him. Same thing. Head explodes, and you know the uh, blood on the the mirror or on the on the, do- on the glass door. That yeah. John, John sees all the stuff and runs away. Oh, that's when he, John. That's what John runs away and takes up the first guy. And he's like, I have, I have a machine gun now. Ho, ho, ho. All that stuff's the same. Um, so John heads to the roof, and we made this when he has a little walkie-talkie now to try to call the cops. Uh, he he does. Uh, and but this time it's a little bit more Christmas lace. Like, lady, I'm not up here trying to direct uh, Rudolph. I need we need the cops down here immediately. Uh, meanwhile, Holly's downstairs realizing her kids are still missing. Like they're not a part of the people who are congregated into the, that open floor plan. And so she's just like, oh, God. Mm. "Oh, people in here saw my kids show up. Like, cool. Everyone's like really cool right now. Everyone's kind of worried about themselves, but she's just trying to." play it cool yeah because she knows her kids are not among everyone here so she's trying to not give away that there is leverage available yeah because holly everyone here in this movie is very smart no one's no one's well, dumb in this that's movie the funny thing is that like when koki mcgee goes to talk to hans <laughs> you actually kind of start to respect him because it's like he's trying to take care of it but he's not blowing holly's cover like he's not being he's not being a complete Yes, like I thought. Yeah, I thought he was going to. I forgot that he doesn't. Yeah, and like you and John, like actually legitimately trying to save him, even though he's like a total asshat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But he, but he can tell he's just like, oh, he's. I know what he's trying to do, mm-hmm. and it's gonna get him killed. Like he's tr- he's trying to be a good guy in his own way, and he's not blowing Collie's cover. But like, but huh. dude, yikes! But dude, you need to just. Sit down and shut up and let John McClain take out the trash. <laughs> take out that Euro trash. Woo, woo. <laughs> so we cut from Holly trying to like, everyone be cool. Like, where are my kids? I don't see them. And we cut to the kids who are now so, like in a different office. Maybe they're like in a different floor or whatever. Sure. Because it's been much longer than five minutes. And so Lucy and Jack have a whispered conversation about like, what's going on? Everything's going to... Is daddy going to save us? Is daddy going to save mommy? Jack is just like, I don't, I think we're in trouble. And I don't, I think also think mom is going to leave us. Like he's, he's over all this. He's very angry with everybody. Yeah. Lucy still believes in like, you know, Santa and everything. And Jack's like, this is, we got, we're in trouble. This whole thing's in trouble, but we need to find our way downstairs. But yeah. Lucy's trying to be like, 
it's okay, everything's going to be fine. And Jack says, I don't think everything's going to be fine, but they got to stick together because he's going to take care of his sister, but he still thinks it's like stupid parents. Yeah. John's up on the roof. The shootout happens on the roof. Uh, and then the whole ele- elevator shaft thing happens where you fall, you know, do, do with the gun, slides down, tries to like, grabs on the thing. But this time, he makes a comment of, how does Santa do all this? <laughs> yeah. Um, then John kills the two guys in the conference room. Uh, and of course, there's more um, Christmas zingers he throws out. That's uh, when he gets the detonators. That's when he gets the detonators, and that's when he throws the the guy out of the window onto the, Carl Winslow's cop car. And he says, welcome to the Christmas party. <laughs> mm-hmm. Exactly right. And so... <laughs> there's a Christmas present for you. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Very easy. Yeah, it could have been, you know, yeah. welcome so, to the St. Paddy's Day party. <laughs> could be whatever. But it's Christmas. Happy Easter. <laughs> nope, it's Christmas. Enjoy your egg. Nope, it's Christmas. <laughs> It'll be whatever holiday you want. So uh, Carl Winslow asks, like, asks John, what do I call you? And then John looks down to his feet, and he makes little fists with his feet, and he goes, um, call me Prancer. Uh, that's good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then Holly goes to confront Hans because that's when she goes in to be like, "Hey, there's a pregnant woman out here. We need a couch." Yeah, and she so same basic thing happens, but she's also like looking Kinda for like, looking hey. for her kids. Like, hey, and, and, and of course Hans like clocks like, "What are you looking for?" Because he's not dumb. He noticed something's up. Yeah. Um, but Hans like, oh, "What's going on?" Um, the FBI come in to try to storm the building. There's more Christmas stuff for them. Uh, we terminology and you know BS with they're trying to term. Of course, they get they're still stupid and bad, and they get you know, they're uh, raffle stomped by the bad guys. Um, Alex comes in to negotiate. Koki and McGee comes in to negotiate. Um, his name is Alex. His name was Alex. So that sleazy executive, his name was Harry Ellis, and he was played by Hart Bachner. Back to you, gentlemen. Huh? They call him something else, though, don't they? You sure? Yeah. Okay. Name was Alex. Um, you know, so that didn't, of course, doesn't work because the same thing happens. Uh, Hans tells, you know, like he, Hans, like, hey, Christmas is a time for miracles. Keep drilling. Trust me, a miracle is on its way. Um, and instead of, and then this, this is the part of the movie where they, they cut over the TV coverage and uh, Gregory Peck tries to go, you know, to figure stuff out and be live on scene. Yeah. We're not doing that this, this time. All that time spent on the, the TV and the coverage of this thing is going to be spent with the kids getting through the building heading down and dealing, you know, talking to each other, dealing with, you know, the Christmas season and like, you know. Gotcha, yeah. So we're spending time with the McLean family trying to hold on to each other in the midst of all this because like they're dodging bad guys. Yeah. Lucy and Jack have to hide from bad guys as they're working their way down the building Yeah. to Argyle. So they're, you know, hiding in a place and they're like, oh no, it's all tense. And then like a Christmas decoration goes off that like draws the bad guys' attention. So they wander off somewhere else and she, okay, we got to keep going down the stairs. Here we go, Lucy. Here we go. We can do this. Bah, 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 bah. Um, and then let's see what happens. Bah, bah, bah. So you can have like a little mini Die Hard adventure of like kids, like, you know, like doing yes. kids stuff, like Home Alone kind of vibe. Yes, they they yeah, yeah, they yeah. are they are just hiding. They're not killing anybody. They're I don't think not. they're killing anybody, but I'm saying like they're like, you know, I don't I don't know. Anyways, uh, so going. okay, so then at this point, Hans is looking for the detonators, and he's out yeah. looking for them. He runs into John, pulls off the American accent. This time, though, when they have their conversation about stuff before John gives him the gun, mm-hmm. they actually talk about like family life and what you know this is a really bad christmas like yeah it is you know he's pulling out those the european cigarettes that he's like john that jack or that john noticed that he clocked it um but like they're talking about christmas and their families and yeah. hans is like you know my brother and i you know he, he's, he's basically telling the truth with that one small lie because well, he kind of does yes yeah so it's the, he's just but they're talking about their families how they used to have Christmas it's like you know, as their, themselves as kids and like what they were doing with the, with their families. So yeah. they actually kind of like bond as people before John gives him the empty gun. Yeah. So we get to know more about because Han said he was doing this for his brother earlier. Remember, his brother's the one from Die Hard with a Vengeance. Yeah. It's Jeremy Irons in the yeah. third movie. So, you know, with foreknowledge, I'm sending up Jeremy Irons. Yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? Um, Takes two words. My brother. Yeah, my brother. Easy. My brother, Jeremy Irons. Um, so then basically, mm. oh, and then, uh, so all the stuff happens, you know, Hans doesn't, you know, gets the clock, you know, gets the empty gun and then the big guy shows up. It's like, you killed my brother earlier, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, shoot the glass. All the stuff, same stuff happens. John runs through the glass. He's bleeding now. And now he's, now he's, um, in the, uh, bathroom, you know, tying off his feet. Yeah. Tending to himself, talking to Carl Winslow. Mm-hmm. And this is when we get <coughs> Carl Winslow's backstory. I shot a kid. He did. On Christmas. Oh. Uh, 
it was Christmas afternoon. He shot a kid on Christmas because he had a gun or, you know, had a toy gun. I thought it was a gun. It was a stupid ray gun. I, now I work at a desk. I hate Christmas because it reminds me of, of what I, the mistake that I made and all the Christmases this kid is never going to see. So he uh, like he does yeah. not like Christmas. This yeah. is his, this is his worst day. Yeah, that's why he's working. So because other people don't, because he's like I can't celebrate this day. Mm-hmm. I can't be home alone. I'd much, but yeah. you know, I'd much rather be you know patrolling or doing trying to trying to make some type of amends doing do doing something, doing something yeah. good. Um. So uh, the so there that's the, that's Carl Winslow's backstory. Uh, and then the kids make it to the parking garage. Hooray, Argyle, Argyle, what is, he's like, what's, because Argyle, remember, has no clue as to what's going on, because this time we're not doing any of the TV coverage, yep. so Argyle doesn't know what's going on, so the kids show up and tell him what's happening, but this time, Huey Lewis caught the kids in the stairwell, exiting into the parking garage, so Huey Lewis goes down to check out what's going on, sees them in the, in the limo, he goes, shoots Argyle, and takes the kids. You killed Argyle? Did I? Oh. I don't know. He got shot. He goes, ah! And takes the kids. And they're like, ah, 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 ah. And Jack's like, ah, 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 trying to, you know. <laughs> he's like, no, 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 no. I'm going to hit the bees square. <laughs> uh, so, you know, John's still up in the, uh, you know, the bathroom. And he's talking, you know, he's t- still talking to Carl Winslow about, like, you know, this is what's going on. And my, you know, the light, my, my kids are here, the. Uh, my wife's here, blah, 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 stuff like this. The big guy shows up. They had that fight for the detonators. Yeah. John chokes them out. Whew. Uh, meanwhile, uh, if, they're about to like send all of the uh, hostages up to the roof. Mm-hmm. But that's when Huey Lewis shows up in the elevator with the kids. And Holly's like, <gasps> and Hans puts it all together and is like, ah, you're who John was talking about. That makes sense. It turns the, the the picture over. Yep, that's okay. You and them are staying with me. Everyone else goes to the roof. So uh, everything else pretty much happens the same. The tech guy now, because they already broke into the safe, they got everything out. Yeah. The tech guy is now downstairs trying to get out, and he's you know he's got the ambulance, and we see our guy be like, oh, you know, he's bleeding. Sees a guy like no, <laughs> rams into the guy with the limo. So our guy is. Not dead, but he's hurt. Yeah. But he rams into the guy and screws you. Uh, the hostages go to the roof. Uh, John gets, you know, was able to get through everybody to the roof and like, get off the roof. They're going to blow up. The- I figured it out. They're going to blow up. Uh, what's going? Who are you? Get off on the roof. <laughs> FBI shows up. Everyone gets off the roof. The FBI guys are, guys are dumb. Everything blows up. Uh, they do, he does the cool, you know, he does the cool stuff off the, the with the, one of the coolest stunts from back in the day. Of tying off the uh, the oh hose. God, that's so good. That was so cool. Yeah, I've never seen anything so like that. Good. You know, it's, it's so great. So good, man. Gets back into the building, uh, tapes the gun to the back of his neck, because you know, it's like because he can hear the walkie-talkie. And it's like uh, McLean, you know, come up, you know, come on up. So this is the final confrontation. But this time now, we got Hans holding Holly, Huey Lewis holding the kids, and the gun taped to the back of his head. So he's still you know the same thing. The kids are freaking out. Holly and John are trying to calm them down. And it's a very tense situation. And John and Hans lock eyes. And kiss? Well, they're just kind of, they're like, <laughs> they're just like seven feet apart. <laughs> yeah, maybe they, they maybe kiss a little bit with their eyes. Hmm. How about okay. that? And then Hans turns to Huey Lewis and says, let them go. <clears throat> and then Huey Lewis is like, what? <clears throat> no. This is... Ah, I see. Huey Lewis shoots Hans. No! Because remember, there's only two guys left at this point. Yeah. It's, it's Huey Lewis and Hans. Yeah. And he's like, well, I can... And he's like, well, I can... Well, we're, ba- we're done. Oh, okay. Well, I can just... Now you're, you're, I can shoot you now and get out of here myself with, with everything. John pulls the gun off from behind and shoots Huey Lewis. Okay. Huey Lewis dead. Why does Hans decide to let them go? Because they talked about their families earlier. Oh. Uh... And they had that moment of... We're okay. doing this for their families. All right. The spirit of Christmas changed Hans enough to not put John's kids in danger. Okay. Okay. I will give you bonus points for for the Christmas spirit affecting the person that I didn't think it would. Hans starts to fall out the window with Holly. John goes out, 
gra- now Holly's not all the way out because in the in the original she's like she's all the way out and he's hanging onto the wrist, right? Yeah. Holly's not all the way out, but Hans is all the way out, like holding on to Holly. But John goes to grab Holly, who's halfway out the window, and the kids run and grab his legs. Daddy, 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 daddy don't go, Dad! Don't go, Dad! So the McLeans are all working together to save John and Holly. They're able to pull Holly back in enough so she's now, you know, mostly up as well. And then John and Hans lock eyes again and says, I'm not a monster. I would have never hurt your kids. And John goes, yeah, I know you wouldn't have. And reaches out, grabs Hans's hand, and pulls him back into the building. Oh, that's beautiful. Because John was also changed by the spirit of Christmas. Because <laughs> even though he killed all these people, he knew he was doing this for his family. Yeah. And he let his kid. he was trying to save his kids. Yeah. So the McLean Hans pulls gets pulled into the building. The McLeans all hug. It's really nice. And Hans just kind of slumps against the wall, like, "Well, I almost got." He's like, "Can I get away?" I, I can't get away. It's it's because all the at this point, all the people have like rushed out of the building. He's like, "Get!" He's like, he's like get off the roof and get out of here." Yeah, like, they, they they just scampered all the way down. And it, I think before like the final scene or fi- the final you know Mexican uh, gun standoff happened, we saw people flowing out of the building. And we saw the police and the FBI like starting to move towards the building. Yeah. So the McLeans are hugging. Hans is against the wall. Um, just kind of like, oh boy, this, well, this, oh, I, I almost pulled it off. This sucks. And all of a sudden you hear a gun cock and everyone turns and it's the big blonde guy who was hanging. Yeah. Who wasn't dead. And then John's like goes to cover his family and Hans is like, wait, you don't. And then all of a sudden, boom, big explosion, big gunshot happens. And John's like, we turn around. Carl Winslow yeah, man. shoots the big guy and he, the guy turns like Rrr! and he's like boom, 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 boom. Just shoots the whole, r- empties the whole revolver in the guy. He shot a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy just stumbles back and he's just but rage is like no, you killed my brother. And one last shot and the big guy is the one who falls out of the window and has that stunt I all see. the way down. Because you got to have the iconic fall. We got to have the iconic fall. And then Carl Winslow and John Hug, John yeah, Hugs his family. They get out of the building. There's Argyle. You know he's wound. You know he's he's bleeding. He's patched up. He's like, I'll take you guys home now. I mean, you should get to a hospital. It's like, ah, I'm okay. I'll get you guys to this place. Then then maybe I'll go to the hospital. Then I go to the hospital. Yeah. Then Christmas Carol music starts playing. The credits roll. That's nice. Die Hard, a Christmas movie. Georgia. No, no, Georgia. L. L. A. I guess I don't know. Right. <laughs> That's very good. I like that. That's a little bit more festive. Just a little bit. Again, you remember, it didn't need to change much. Just, just the kids are around. A little bit more talk of this Christmas season, and just the fact that Hans was doing it for his brother and his family because they were getting shafted. They didn't. The company screwed them, so they're going to screw the company back. Yeah, just a couple small details. Absolutely. Mine. Yes. So, ha- I. Hmm. Okay. How, mm-hmm. how how are you going to fix Whereas, this? How are you going to okay. change this? I I amp up the Christmas to about 100. Okay. okay. Here is my fix. All right. Making Die Hard a Christmas movie. Um, we open up in the, the exact same way that we do. Mm-hmm. Uh, John McClane is getting off of a plane. Uh, the only change is that the only change is that the guy says uh oh if you need to like get rid of the jet lag you take off your shoes and your socks and your pants and your pants and he's like so i'm just like walking around in my in my boxer shorts is like yeah but like you're in your hotel room but like it's just you know and you you, you just make scrunch with you make a little fist with your feet and it feels good you and know i i also had a, a similar idea of maybe doing what you're about to do in mine <laughs> and i was like I don't, I don't need to it's now, fine okay keep going though so john mcclain he meets up with argyle uh, and they're riding in the limousine. Sure. He's got the big bear, mm-hmm. um, and he's going to uh, meet his he's going to meet his wife at the at Nakatomi Plaza. Mm-hmm. Now, a couple of things that have changed about this: Nakatomi is a toy company, and for this, it's the Nakatomi Toy Company. Sure, and it's their world headquarters yeah. that they just moved to. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh, they were like, oh, they just moved to, to L A. Yeah, they were a lot. They were up north, a lot farther up north. Um, 
But like Japan, right? Yeah, but like northern, northern Japan. Northern Japan, yeah. <laughs> the, the tippy top of that island. Yep, uh, yep, but yep. like it's like this new fancy building and Argyle tells them like, oh yeah, and they like light it up during during the Christmas time. He's like, it's like all red and uh, red and white. He's like, it looks like the North Pole up there. It's crazy. And the, it, like, it looks like a giant candy can. Like it's the North Pole. And uh, But as they're driving, uh, we find out... Uh, we develop Argyle a little bit more. Like, look, oh, okay. I love Argyle, but like, you know, what we find out from uh, John and Argyle's conversation is about like, yeah, you know, like their conversation sets up like where John is at in his marriage and sure. stuff like that, mm-hmm. and that's it's actually very well done. But we also learn from Argyle um, when we find out when Argyle finds out that John is a cop, he gets a little nervous, mm-hmm. and John's like, "Oh, like you have you done some time or anything?" And we find out that Argyle like. He's like, yeah, I got picked up for something. I was like young and stupid. And like, I'm trying to get my life back on track. Like, he's like, I just got this job. I just got out a little while ago. And uh, he's like, I'm just like, I'm just so excited. Like, I haven't been home for Christmas in a really long time. And I get to show up to my mom's house for Christmas in a limousine. He's like, I may be driving it, but I get to show up in a limousine. Isn't that cool? And and John's like, yeah, man, yeah. And like, they they hit it off, obviously. And like, I love the shot of the bear in the back. Um, it's so good. Uh, so they get to, they get to Nakatomi, uh, and John takes the bear with him this time. Okay. Um, and Argyle's like, uh, and this is Christmas Eve. I'm, yes. I'm assuming. Yep. Uh, so it's a Christmas Eve party. Like Argyle's like, hey man, like I'll wait down here. Uh, you're my last fare of the day, so like it, you need to go wherever you need to go. And he's like, oh, I want to make sure you get there for Christmas. He's like that's tomorrow morning. Like don't even worry about it. Great, great, great. John gets up uh to the party. And uh, it's it's a lot. It's a toy company. Yes, it's a little bit ornate. The Christmas party is like all the de- the Christmas decorations are up to a thousand. Sure, like it's nuts. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And John gets there and has all his conversations uh, with Holly and like trying to figure it out. But then uh, someone like peeks in the room and is like, uh, "Mr. Nakatomi's here, or uh, Mr. Takagi's here. Like uh, he's doing his whole Santa thing." And they're like, and they're like, oh, and Holly's like, Mr. Mr. Takagi does, he does Santa every year. And it's like, he has like the best outfit. He looks almost just like Santa. It's awesome. We learned like, it's the best, but, uh, we see, uh, like throughout all this, like John is like, kind of like not on board and we kind of like find out, um, like through his conversation for Argyle as well, he's just kind of like ah Christmas, like whatever. Yeah. Like I brought this bear, like I guess this is enough. And uh, Holly introduces John to Mister Takagi, who's like in the full Santa getup. Yeah, he's like, hey, he's gr-. and he is a delight. Of course he is. And he sees the he's bear. Very jolly. We see he, he's jolly. He, yeah, he's a jolly guy. But he's yeah. been drinking a little bit. His, sure, his nose, yeah, his his nose a little red. red. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and he and he sees the bear that John brought, and he's like, we didn't make that bear. You can't bring your kids something we didn't make here. He's like, this is our brand new facilities. He's like, he's like, at all these different floors are all these different toy shops and all the stuff. We make everything here. That's one of the most amazing things about the new Nakatomi Plaza. Like, we make all the toys in house. Like, come on, I'll I'll show you I'll show you all the new places. Sure. Uh, and uh, as we like are walking through the toy, like we're we're basically establishing like all the different like toy yes, shops, exactly. Yep. And all the yep. different other mm-hmm. floors. So everyone knows um, what happens later. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, uh, through, and it's Mr. Takagi just kind of like holding court and just like giving like presents, like toys to John to like, and he's just got his arms full of toys. Um, and John's the whole time is like, oh, all right. All right yeah. He's like, well, it looks like, you know, he kind of, it seems like, you know, you guys uh, really do do well here, huh? And, uh, and Mr. Takagi like takes him in and he's like, I sense... He's like, yes, it's all, it's very ornate. It's this is all a lot, but he's like, you know, my father, st- like my grandfather, started this company, and he always said, um, he he just he uh, he started this company with just the two bits in his pocket, and he's like, I he's like at the uh, I've always run, tried to run this company with that knowledge, and knowing that like if we you know. Whenever, whatever I'm, whatever I need, I just need to you just remember those two bits in my pocket. Like it, you know, it. We can start, you know. It, there's hope. Yeah. And it's like okay, um, 
And John's like, all right, all whatever. Right, yeah. They go back mm-hmm. up, and he puts all the presents like in in uh, Holly's office. Um, and then from there, it's I, I think it's the exact same because there's nothing to change. They they take over that office pretty effectively. Yeah. Huey Lewis is like, well, wow, this is my chair now. I'm yeah. not the security <laughs> guy. Um, Time and to so, watch a football game. Yeah, but... they take over, um, and uh, John obviously like kind of scatters up, and then they take uh, Mister Tagagi up to like the penthouse floor, mm-hmm. and you can tell that it's all, it's like a collection of all like ornate like old toys and stuff. Like it's a kind of a history of all the stuff they've made. Sure, there. yeah, yeah. And it's the same interrogation scene, uh, uh, but. Uh, the whole time Hans is trying to get the code for the safe mm-hmm. and Mr. Takagi is just like, I don't think you understand. I don't think you know what's in the set. I don't think you know what's in there. And Hans is like, Oh, I know. Ex- I know exactly what I'm here looking for. Like we're here to get rich. And he's like, I don't, that's not at all. Okay. I don't, I can't give you the code. I don't have it here. Um, and I think, as he's saying that, he clocks John, like Takagi. Takagi clocks John, mm-hmm. and uh, he he's just like, I can't give you the code. I don't have it. And he winks at John, mm-hmm. and just get, and gets wasted. But as he's shot, he disappears. Oh my! He Obi Wan. Yeah, he totally he becomes one, yeah one with the force. Like he shoot, he gets shot and goes down, and like they're like trying to figure out what the next steps are, and then they look down and like there's no body, it's just clothes. He got ra- yeah, and they're like Christmas raptured. They're like we don't have time to, for this. Like we need to move into Plan B. Like I don't know. That's not, but Hans Hans is like, that's fine. Like he's on unfa- everyone else is is like freaked, but he's unfazed. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they're like, well, yeah, we got to get into the safe and get all this cash. Um, and so after they all leave that room, uh, John runs in to try and like figure out like if there's, if he can save Mr. Takagi or anything like that. But he realizes he's not wearing pants or shoes or socks. And so he looks down at the, the, the clothes that, uh, George just left there. And he he puts on Mr. Tagagi's like yes. Santa Santa yeah. pants, uh huh, yes, and like puts the uh, the suspenders on, but like doesn't he doesn't put on the coat? It's like no, too, it's too be, hot. Yeah, uh, but then he tries to put on his shoes and socks, but realizes they don't fit because uh, he's like ah, he's yeah. he's, he's running out with Santa pants on. Yeah. yeah, he puts the Santa pants yeah. on, um, and then a good amount of uh, the action up until this point, like after this, mm-hmm. is very similar. But you're, they are fighting through, uh, like, toy, toy shops. Yeah. And so there's a lot more, like, kind of Home Alone toy... Sh- toy uh... John still has his gun, right? Oh, yeah. They're still... Oh, this okay. is still an action movie. They're yeah, still... Okay. They wasted Mr. Takagi. They shot that dude in the head. Like, this is still an action movie. Wink. Uh, oh, the eye explodes. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, eventually, uh, <laughs> John, uh, he gets to a point where uh he's on the roof he uh, he's like uh he gets the attention of the police and uh you know mr winslow shows up <laughs> he'll always uh, you know yes he's carl Reginald winslow yeah. johnson uh shows up and then uh he gets the detonators and he's talking to him on the mic the whole time and uh throughout their conversation uh we find out that um, when uh, Reginald Vell Johnson tells him about uh, shooting uh, shooting the kid, mm-hmm. similar similar thing, but they're talking about like, oh, like what are you doing for Christmas? Blah blah blah. And Reginald Vell Johnson is like, oh, like, um, yeah, I don't know if I'm getting anything for Christmas this year. I don't think I'll probably get anything for Christmas ever again. And and uh, John's like, oh, what does that even mean? He's like, oh, I'm. He's like, I'm on the naughty list. And John's like, okay. Like he has like, yeah, I shot a kid. I didn't mean to. It was an accident. But like, I don't, I don't think, I think Christmas is just something I don't get to do anymore. And yeah. as John's like, oh, that's, I mean, that's, that's dark, really sad, dude. man. Yeah. He's like, I'm having a kid. And like, I just, you know, hopefully like, it'll just be an, it'll be a new dawn for him. And that's like all well and good. Um, and, uh, 
so at, eventually, like he gets the detonators. Like, sure. Look, yeah. a lot of the action we don't, you know, what I nope. need, we don't need to fix. No, nope, not at all. So good. All the crawling around. Uh, I, I loved that chimney line. Like that. That I'm totally stealing that. Like, uh, how does? I'm like, I'm we're moving around in a chimney. This is stupid. This is so stupid. Um, and uh, the conversation when Hans goes up to get, um. When Hans goes up to get the detonators from John right. and pretends to be, I think they have a very similar conversation to what you were talking about. Um, but it eventually comes to a head where they just start talking about each other as like their their favorite Christmas. Sure, yeah. And it's like, oh, like, you know, like what, what was that one thing you wanted for Christmas you never got? Right. And Hans is like, oh, you know, I, he's like, it sounds stupid and I know I'm from Germany. Um, but there was always like the 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 old the old school GI Joe. Um, I always I always wanted a a, a, a GI Joe and I never got one. John's like, yeah, I mean, yeah, I never I never got one of those either. Twelve inch. Yeah, yeah, he was like, yeah, those were so cool, cool with the yeah. the motorcycle with the sidecar, and they're like kind of riffing about it. And then yeah, he hands him the gun without the bullet in it. Um. And then uh, eventually, yeah, it all comes to a head. And he gets the detonators back and sets the plan in motion. And they finally get into the vault. Yes. And the FBI drops the... um, The power? Drops the power. They get in. And all of the people that are there to steal with Hans uh, are... They open up the vault. And there's there's nothing... uh, There's, like, no... Uh, money or anything in right. there there's th- like there's just one big book just sitting in the middle of the room yeah they're like where's all the money and he's like it's in the book he's like we take the book we're we'll be rich we'll be rich forever like we can sell that book to the highest bidder we're set and they're like okay uh, yep. mm-hmm. um and it it comes to find out that um Hans like sits down with it and opens it up and it's just names and yep. it's just naughty or nice, right. naughty yep. or nice, mm-hmm. naughty or nice. And Hans is just asking them what their names are and he's just Put, scratching out mm-hmm. naughty and putting nice. Yep. The list has power, man. And he's like, "Oh, this is this is the list. Like, it, we, we'll we'll be nice forever, and Santa will take extraordinarily good care of us. And if anyone wants to get on the nice list, they can just." Pay yes. us, pay us a hundred thousand dollars, and they're like, okay, and he's like, oh, you didn't, you don't, you didn't think Santa was real, did you? And they're like, no. He's like, yeah, it's a long story. Um, uh, <laughs> it's. <laughs> I'm feeling an ace up your sleeve, sir. Um, and no, no, it's uh, <laughs> he closes the book, and then they go, they go to right. make their escape, um, and. Uh, Argyle like kind of gets word of uh, what I think in this Argyle gets word of what's happening, mm-hmm. um, and uh, he has to make a decision in the moment to either stop this guy in the ambulance mm-hmm. and then like basically ruin his. Because every time we check back with Argyle, he's like, "I gotta be home for Christmas. Like, I'm stuck in this building. Oh no." Like my Christmas is ruined, and he has to make the decision to give up being making it home for Christmas, home for Christmas in style, like mm-hmm. in his limousine, right? In order to help help his friends mm-hmm. and stop, and uh, like so he inevitably like makes that choice. He's like, Arca, like you're gonna like you can't lose this job. Like you can't you're not gonna show up to your mom's house in a busted up limousine. He's like, oh, okay, we gotta do what we gotta do. Like Merry Christmas, and it just smashes it in. Merry Christmas, John. Yeah, Merry, Merry, yeah, Merry Christmas, John. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I just killed a guy. <laughs> did he die? Wait, did the tech guy die? <laughs> no, no, he just got knocked out. Yeah, I think. I, yeah, no, he definitely didn't die. Um, yeah, a little baby crunch, and then uh, side crunch. It's the final confrontation, right? Uh, between oh oh I forgot one big part yeah uh the the scene where they break all the glass yeah yeah it's in the Christmas tree room and it's all Christmas Christmas ornaments ornaments. yeah yeah shoot Uh, the trees shoot the trees (laughs) yes exactly um absolutely yeah um and it comes down to the the final hallway over the place Huey Lewis Holly we've got 
um, we got our guy and uh, old Hans Gruber, and uh, uh, there's the the halt the the second in the halt like the hallway, and then mm-hmm. we get a flashback to Mister Takagi being like, you know, I just always knew there was just that I always just keep those two sixpence in my pocket, um. And as he that he has that flashback, like he can you can he can just like feel something in his pocket, mm-hmm. and he's like, uh, "Hans, I have something for you," and and he's like, "Slow down, McLean," and he put, like he reaches into his pocket and pulls out a GI hey, Joe. Joe. Yeah, and the, other, <laughs> and the other pocket's got that sidecar. I don't know how, I don't know how it came yeah, out. But I don't. Yeah. Um, Merry Christmas, Just... buddy, and throws him to him. And, uh, as, uh, like, as he is, uh, like tries to catch it and reach back, uh, he drops the book and then falls out the window and goes, ah, 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 ah. Oh no. Just like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Huey Lewis, uh, surrenders. Oh, okay. And, uh, Holly and John, uh, smile and kiss. And she was just like, uh, she was like, I didn't know what I wanted for Christmas, but. But this, I guess this is it. And they kiss. And uh, then they go downstairs and uh, they, they they look through the book. Sure. And, uh, and John just suddenly, he's like, oh, yeah, we need to see you change back to this and this and this. I could probably check it twice, though. Uh, and Holly goes, looks at him and she goes, hmm. <laughs> and, and then they they go down. And uh, um, meet up with Reginald Vell Johnson. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, they have, you know, all the stuff's wrapping up. Sure, yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the, the old guy, the, the bad guy comes out and, uh-huh. and he shoots him. Sure, yeah. And then they have a private moment mm-hmm. where uh, John's like, hey, I want to show you something. Yeah. And flips it to his name. And mm-hmm. it's just like, I think you're like, you're not on the naughty list, but like you need to give yourself a break. Like you're doing the best you can. Yeah. And then they're like, thanks, bud. Like, and then they hug. Yeah. Um, and then that's kind of the end of the movie. Um, <laughs> and then <laughs> post credit sequence. Yeah, 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 yeah. Post credit sequence. We hear uh we hear uh sleigh bells. Yeah. And a and a sleigh uh land on the roof mm-hmm. of a house. In, in, you know, South Central L.A. Mm-hmm. And then uh, <laughs> and then suddenly take off. And then there's a ring at the door. And, and an, old, an old woman opens the door to see a sleigh flying by in the background. But Argyle's being like, <laughs> hey, mom, sorry. I, I'm, here, I'm here for Christmas. I, I came in a real cool ride. And it's just like, ho, 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 Merry Christmas. And it's John McClane. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> John, John McClane is Santa. Santa Cla- yeah, he got Santa Claus. <laughs> John McClane got Santa Claus. Yeah, and that's who falls off the roof to make Tim Allen the Santa Claus in the nineties. Oh, yeah. But what happens in Die Hard two then? Because it just it makes a. Are there any more Die Hard sequels after that, or is it just? Yeah, and they're all they're all Christmas related. Okay. Look, if they're gonna be, if this is a Christmas movie, then they all got to be Christmas movies. So, sh- okay, sure. Yeah. Just wanted, just wanted to make sure. Ho ho ho! Now I have a machine gun. <laughs> Yeah. Merry Christmas. And the, and the lesson you learn is um, if you find, so, if uh, don't try pants on from somebody who just got raptured. <laughs> They're probably cursed. He pants. put the pants on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My thought was it was going to be like someone's Santa outfit that was in Holly's uh, office that he would have changed into because he didn't have something comfortable or got something got spilled on it that he would. Mine would no. not have. Mr. Takagi yeah. was Santa. Yeah. My, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I got that. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you so mad? Because you Santa Claus, John McClane. Yeah, I told you I was going to lean into the Christmas what, magic one of, of the it. best action heroes of all times, yeah, and man. you Santa Claus him. Yeah, man. <laughs> now it's a Christmas movie. Is it better? No, it's not. <laughs> Die Hard's a perfect movie, but if you need to make it a Christmas movie, we can do that. <laughs> When people say it's a Christmas movie, I'm like, you're taking away from it, like the, how good that movie is. Okay, just saying. Sure. 
Oh, ho, ho. Good gunshots when he does it. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. It's John McClane. You can't. Yeah. You put the Santa in McClane, but you can't take the McClane out of Santa. Yeah, man. That's what I'm saying. Scott Calvin. <laughs> Get him. <laughs> well, well, I think we did it. I think we did do it. We made Die Hard a Christmas movie. And how? We still have to see a Violent Night, by the way, which oh, I is know. apparently which... a Die Hard Christmas movie. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I really want to see that film. I really, really do. Oh, my gosh. We, 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 but we're going to go office Christmas party. Office right? Christmas party. And hopefully our office Christmas party doesn't get hijacked by a bunch of German terrorists. I sure hope not. <laughs> we don't have a lot to give them. We really don't. <laughs> I don't even have a safe. We should get a safe. Ooh, Ooh. Like a man-sized safe? A man-sized safe. So we can lock Brian and never <laughs> let him out. All right. Well, <laughs> that's what our episode to you guys. If you, thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you are uh, ingesting this podcast in any of the uh, the audio spaces from uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all and all above, if you wouldn't mind just leaving us a quick review if you had a nice time with the show today, uh, leave us five stars. Maybe uh, leave us uh, what other holiday movies we should uh, fix into non-holiday movies, or make maybe make we could make Warren Beat. We could make uh, the. I'm not the, reading Toysievsky because I can't even <laughs> pronounce the name correctly. <laughs> well, you know, just to let us know, so you, just say hi in the comments. You can do whatever you want. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much. If you wouldn't mind doing all the YouTube things that you know to do, like, subscribe, hit the bell, do that YouTube that you do so well. It does. It's a huge help. Uh, mm-hmm. We love making this show, and we love that you listen to it. And uh, as we end every episode, heartbreak feels good in a place like this. It's the slow, sharpened candy cane that you never <laughs> see coming. Ho, 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 Mr. Takagi.